Hello and welcome to Special Report with me, Lisa Joseph. In this edition, our focus on the Citizenship by Investment program takes us to Sister Isle, Dominica, where what has been described as a landmark case with significant importance to the region has been filed. The Dominica United Workers Party filed the High Court action against the government over the Citizenship by Investment program, the CBI as it is called over there. The Dominica United Workers Party says it is seeking accountability and transparency in the CBI, which has over the years been slapped with claims of mismanagement. The action in Dominica comes as the islands of St. Kitts, Nevis and St. Lucia face a RICO civil suit by MSR Media, in which MSR Media alleges underselling, among other wrongdoings, in the citizenship by investment programs. In a recent interview on this program, MSR Media CEO Philippe Martinez indicated that a two-year investigation by his company that ended earlier this year found that all CBI programs in the East Caribbean were compromised by bad actors, with the exception of Antigua Barbuda. In Dominica, the opposition has been on a years-long crusade drawing attention to the mismanagement and abuse of the CBI. Here to discuss all the embedded issues is former journalist and radio presenter, former Margo, or Marigot, I believe they call it, MP, and he's the former leader of the opposition, and now president of the United Workers' Party, Dominica. Welcome to Mr. Lennox Linton. Thank you so much for joining us. Good to have you. Good invitation. It's a joy and honor to be with you. Now, there's so much that we have to discuss, and I want to jump into it right away. Uh, the high court action uh, by the party, what would have led to this decision? Years and years of lack of accountability for the monies raised uh, by the program. Years and years of lack of accountability in terms of uh, the way the government was managing the program, which has led to serious repercussions like the imposition of visa restrictions on Dominicans traveling to Britain and Ireland and uh, years and years of concerns in the public that the monies raised by this program have been severely mismanaged and I'll give you an example of what we're talking about in the last eight years we have sold citizenships to 50,709 persons. And those citizenships should have earned Dominica $11.6 billion. But we have only received into the treasury of Dominica $3.4 billion, which leaves an amount of $8.2 billion unaccounted for for the eight-year period July 1st, 2016 to June 30th, 2024. We have asked questions about these monies in the parliament, outside of the parliament, and the government has basically thumbed its nose. The government says, oh, we are using the Citizenship by Investment program to build housing. We are using it to help poor people. We are employing persons in the National Employment Program, etc. And it is helping us to pay our debts. It is helping us uh, manage uh, disasters. It was there for us during COVID, etc. So we are spending the money on those things. Why are you asking us about monies? So we, we've, been, we've been trying our best to make sure that the, the scheme is properly managed in the public interest of Dominica. We've been trying our best to ensure that all of the money from the sale of citizenship come into the treasury of the Commonwealth of Dominica. And so, no, that's just about having, to, having that failed is, with that over a number of years, we decided that it was time to ask the courts for a declaration that the government was behaving in disobedience to the Constitution and to the rule of law in its management of the Citizenship by Investment Program, which has been with us since 1991. Yeah? 
Yes, we were very, years, very no. yes, very long time in the business. And all of those years that you, as you indicated, that you have, you know, been doing all of this uh, sort of um, scrutiny of the program. Now you've uh, gotten senior counsel from uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Anand and Ram Logan. And you had a press uh, briefing uh, last week. And, and we want to take a listen to uh, senior counsel Anand Ram Logan as he addressed um, the press and the public of Dominica on why he believes that this case is very important, not just for the island of Dominica, but for the rest of the Eastern Caribbean. We intend to ask the court to disclose, um, to ask the government to disclose a copy of the agreement for the program and the, between the government and its agents. We intend to ask to see the terms and conditions um, of that contract because there have, been, there have been public admissions and statements about fraudulent practices within that program. And the question arises, well, what action and consequence has followed as a result of that disclosure? In addition to that, we, the case is constructed based on the Dominican Constitution on the principle that all monies and revenues earned by the government is meant to be paid into the consolidated fund which is subject to parliamentary scrutiny and approval for any form of expenditure. Here, significant funds are not reaching the consolidated fund, but is being spent pursuant to other types of arrangements that is outwit the constitutional framework which governs public expenditure and accountability um, to, the, to the people through their elected representatives in the parliament. And the senior counsel there, Anand Ram Logan, speaking, of course, to that uh, constitutional responsibility. But one reading the Constitution of Dominica would notice, uh, Mr. Linton, uh, that the Constitution does provide for uh, accounts and the establishment of special funds outside of the consolidated fund. So one would say off the bat that what you're trying to do is null and void. You can see... No, no, it's, it's not null and void. The, the Constitution is very specific at Section 76. It does provide an exception, but the exception it provides does not apply to the circumstances that are of concern to us. So let me explain. The Citizenship by Investment Program from the 1990s, 1991, has always been about development capital raising development capital for the nation, the nature island of Dominica. The interest of the people in development, the growth and development of the economy, the expansion of social services, etc. That is always what it has been about. So that money from citizenship sales belong to the people of Dominica. And indeed, we had two options for getting citizenship in Dominica, because in fact, we started out not bringing citizenship money directly into the treasury for development purposes, but we started facilitating private investments in hotels and giving the investors in those private schemes a passport as an appreciation for investments in Dominica, bringing their foreign direct investment into Dominica through the Citizenship by Investment Program. That's how we started in 1991. And for the first few years of the program, we only had one developer working on a single project and that developer being the agent for, the only agent we had for the program selling the citizenships in the Pacific Rim. And they ended up with about 500 investors, each investing about 60,000 US dollars. 35 was going into the hotel development and 35 was going into the fee purse of the developer. Turns out that monies were raised under the program. Uh, there was an attempt to build a hotel on 403 acres of land purchased for that purpose. And it never happened. What we ended up with was fraudulent concrete and a whole bunch of excuses from the agent and the developers claiming all sorts of reasons why they could not have done the project. 
we moved from that into having citizenship facilitate real estate investment, investment in real estate and hotel development, manufacturing, etc. But also to bring money from the sale of citizenship directly into the consolidated fund for the purpose of general development of the country. That happened from sometime between 1995 and 2000 when the United Workers Party was in government and quote-unquote re-engineered the citizenship by investment program so we could have had monies not exclusively going into that agency and that developer but being available to other developers other agents other people who wanted to build hotels and so on and general purposes development in Dominica. that fund is called the economic diversification fund that is the fund through which well it, it evolved into the economic diversification fund that's how it is known and called that's how it's accounted for in the government revenue and accounting system so the economic diversification fund is the state's fund for for bringing in the state's passport money and that was one option for getting citizenship where you make a contribution of a hundred thousand US dollars and once you clear due diligence and all is well you pay a hundred thousand dollars you are a citizen of the Commonwealth of Dominica that was going on for years and uh, sometime around 2013 2014 there about we started seeing increased revenues uh, coming from the fact that people were waking up to the existence of a Dominica program on the other side of the world where their passports don't work so well and so they were happy to have our passports for a fee that could take them more easily in their global travel adventures and then we find we find this is this is and I need you to listen to this carefully we find that there are discrepancies in what the government is reporting as revenues and the amount of people who are gaining citizenship and it first came to attention back in 2019 when the, the financial secretary published in the official gazette a list of 3961 names of persons who were successful applicants on the citizenship by investment program 3961 names for a five-month period in 2018 2019 that was from august of 2018 to december of 2018 a year a financial year in which the government was reporting revenues of 226 million dollars when we did the math on on that 3961 persons over five years prorated across the 12 the 12 months of the year we came up with a figure using uh, 50,000 US dollars as the average, not 100,000 US dollars, 50,000 US dollars as the average price that each person successfully, successful applicant got or paid. We came up with a figure of $1.291 billion, where the government was only reporting $226 million as revenue. We sensed then that something was wrong. We asked the question in the parliament. The prime minister refused to answer the question in the parliament, but he went on a private radio station supportive of the government to say that we had a new option for citizenship that nobody knew anything about. And that option turned out to be what they call the housing option operating under a gentleman called Anthony Hayden with a company, Montreal Management Company, it's Montreal Management Establishment, MMCE, we call it down here. And what was happening with that is the citizenships under that option were being sold for the same price as they were under the EDF option, but the money was not coming into the Treasury as was the case with the EDF option. The money was going into escrow account under the control of Mr. Hayden. And he was using that money to build housing and to do infrastructure work. The government ended up giving him exclusive 
contracts, no bid, to basically do all the infrastructure work it was interested in and all the housing development work it was interested in. No, no space for any local developers, no space for anybody in Dominica to, to enter a bid and have some of the business. All of it went to Mr. Hayden. So he decided who would work, who would not work. And he brought in a lot of foreign contractors and uh, foreign workers and so on. And Dominicans were sitting, standing aside and looking while this was going on. But what was happening at the same time is that Hayden appears to have been authorized by the government to sell at discounted prices. So we have agents because the, the program of Dominica is administered through agents, approved agents. So they are out there in the market compelled to sell at the legal price of $100,000 for the through the EDF, the Economic Diversification Fund option. But Hayden is allowed to discount. So he can sell at 90000 he can sell at 80000 If you have the same product available in the market, one for 90000 or eighty, the one you can get at 90000 or 80000 and the other one, you must take it at 100000 Which are you going to take? So it didn't take long before the housing option started cannibalizing revenues from the EDF which is the government's program. And with that government program, government was able to do anything it wanted. It has 20-something ministries of government. It can do its housing. It can do its public works. It can do its assistance to healthcare and education. It has the structure for doing that and the money coming through the citizenship by investment program to do that. But the government said, hey, you know what? We don't have the capability to do all this infrastructure and so on. So we're going to give it to the, the government ha does not have the capability, so the government is going to give it to one man. And the government is going to give him his own passport selling program to finance it. Now, I'm hearing a lot that, of similarities. That, that, I, I, I was no, just about this, to tell this, you, uh, uh, go ahead, make that point, and then I'll try. No, no, but yeah, the, point, the point I wanted to make before you, before you make your observation is that that program on the Hayden, has never been catered for in any legislation. It is not part of the regulations. It's not part of the law. And so it is unlawful and therefore does not qualify for the exception created at Section 76 of the Constitution. And that is one matter that will be fully interrogated in the court matter that is uh, now before the court. The, but I'll our contention... Yeah. No, I was saying that I'm hearing Very a lot so. of similarities with 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 uh, Dominica and Saint Lucia. Now, here in Saint Lucia, uh, the opposition United Workers Party um, is well. The leader Alan Chastney has indicated that it is going to pursue a lawsuit of its own, um, seeking some sort of injunction against uh, the, the sale of the citizenship. Uh, at, while it can find that sort of clarity that you yourself seeking over in Dominica. And that was made on a, a political platform on the 22nd of September. That statement was made. Now, Alan here, uh, Alan Chastney is taking the government to task over uh, the infrastructure program, which Caribbean Galaxy is the investor in, the developer in. And then also the housing project that we are now told is going to be done uh, by BMAX, uh, uh, LLC, BMAX Caribbean. Now, the government has said everything is completely legit with, with this. In a press statement um, for declaring the approval of the uh, projects, the statement from the Citizenship by Investment Unit here says, while the two projects have been approved and applications have been received, there has been no approvals given for any application. Accordingly, no monies have been received by any of the developers of the two projects. The enterprise agreement requires developers to finance the projects upfront and recover their monies when approvals are given and minimum investments are paid. And they went on to say again, no approvals have been given or monies received for any of the two projects. I wanted to take a listen to what Alan Chastney has to say about this particular aspect that they have not received any applications, and they said that they have not received any money for the infrastructure program to date. Yet, we saw last week 
a particular law firm had put in over 450 files for the infrastructure program in one month. 2,000 passports. So the fact is that nobody's applied, that's a lie. They have applied. If in fact people in fact have not applied and have not paid any money, and given that the price was changed because of the signing of the MOA on July 1st, what price do people pay? They paid $100,000 that was there before, or they now paid a new $250,000. So is that really what was being attempted here by making it retroactive? Was to try to legalize something that was already illegal? Because making it retroactive does not solve the problem because all the persons back in January that they're making it retroactive to, all the promoters and all the agents would not have known this program existed. And I, I see you get a smile there. So you see, do you find that the situations do have some similar lines? They, they definitely do, Lisa. Here, here is what has happened in Dominica, which is, which is what St. Lucia now needs to be very careful with. The government had the EDF. The EDF was the avenue through which all the money was coming in from the development work in Dominica. And then Mr. Skerritt allowed this unlawful option, the housing access option, uh, through Hayden and MMC to cannibalize the revenues that traditionally went into the Economic Diversification Fund. What you have now is a situation where less than 10% of the monies from the sale of Dominican citizenship is going into the government fund, the government program, while over 90% is going into the private arrangement that Mrs. Carrot hatched up with Anthony Hayden and MMCE. So now, when you hear all the concerns that, that the government has about the lawsuit that we filed, stopping the program and stopping benefits to poor people and elderly people and unemployed people through the SVK program and so on. What is really happening is that the government knows that its revenue stream from the citizenship by investment program has effectively been killed off by the private arrangement it has. And under that private arrangement now, we're having difficulty bringing the money into Dominica for the infrastructure purposes, infrastructure development purposes it was intended for. It's a huge problem because you ask yourself, which government anywhere in the world could have its citizenship by investment program running, money from the sale of citizenship of the country, bringing it directly into a fund for development purposes, and then deciding that you will allow another fund privately managed to cannibalize those revenues for the government and development purposes in Dominica. Because you claim you didn't have the capacity to build houses at the level you wanted to build them, so you wanted to, to, to put this private person in charge and to give him his own CBI program. You move from that to give him the airport program. He, he's the one developing the international airport. He's the one developing, or he's the one that has been doing health centers. He did hospital. All of the major infrastructure works under the capital program, the capital, the public sector investment program of Dominica in the last uh, 10, 8 to 10 years has been under this gentleman. And it has come to a stage now where because of the difficulty that he is having, complying with the money transfer requirements of the international banking system. The monies are not coming into Dominica. Programs are shutting down. Programs are being closed. Programs are being suspended for that purpose. So now the public interest is being hurt on two fronts. The government is finding it more and more difficult with declining revenues through the Economic Diversification Fund to do the things that it was accustomed to do. and where it has allowed the lion's share of the money to go into that private arrangement, the money is not coming in either for the purposes that it was intended in the arrangement, which, I remind you, is an unlawful arrangement because there is no legal authorization for this so-called housing option to get citizenship of Dominica.
So and we, and because we here in Senusha, we we too have heard from our prime minister during uh, the budget address. He did indicate to the nation uh, that the uh, government through its uh, national economic fund was. A, gaining uh, less revenue uh, because of <laughs> the real estate option and uh, because you know it was in effect competing um, with that. So we'll get a little bit more on that a little later on. But you are also in, in this lawsuit, you are also speaking to the procurement process. And I, I want to go back to uh, Annan, uh, Senior Counsel Annan Ram Logan for him to explain that just a little bit more for us and we'll pick up the conversation from there. But insofar as funds have been utilized from that program to invest in housing and other types of programs, but in a manner where non-bid contracts are awarded, where there is no request for proposals advertised so that you can get the best value for public money, so that you can ensure that there is competitive tendering, so that you can ensure that the contractors that are chosen have the competence, the track record, the knowledge, and the expertise to deliver the program in the public interest at the lowest possible value for the benefit of Dominicans who need housing. This is not against housing, this is for housing. The irony is that if, if, the houses are overpriced. You will end up in a situation where more houses could have been built for less money in a more, in a more competent manner. And at the heart of this case, it is politically driven in the interest of the people because it is in support of that housing program to ensure that the Dominican people, whose monies ultimately have been spent, is spent in a manner that is transparent, fair, Accountable and most importantly, more importantly, where they are getting the best bang for their buck and they're getting the best value for their money. There isn't much point in building houses that are not up to standard or houses that could have been that could have been built to a higher level and standard, or you could have gotten more houses for the same value. So this is in support of the housing initiative because we understand the need. For housing for Dominicans. And yes, there is quite a need for the houses. I mean, for in Dominica, um, in 2015, after Tropical Storm Erica, um, you after the, that storm, the 16,000, almost one in four Dominicans, severely affected by that. And um, the government had almost 23,500 houses in Dominica uh, were destroyed. That's 90% of the nation's total housing stock. And the government said it had to move very quickly to be able to remedy the situation. And then again, um, you were devastated by Maria. Of course, we know complete devastation there. And then the, the government decided that, you know what, that we need to do resilient building. And so the plan was to construct some 5,000 resilient homes by the year 2030. And the housing recovery project was revamped to enhance um, uh, that uh, sort of intent. And so the government says, hey, we are completely on track to being able to do this. And I can tell you, I've seen some of the aerial footage of, of the houses, and I think we have, um, we can show. And, you know, here in St. Lucia, we will say, whoa, this looks great. This looks fantastic. I may want to move to Dominica to be able to get a house from the government free of charge. So what, what, what do you say to that? Well, I, I'm saying you're welcome to come to Dominica to get a house from the government free of charge. Uh, if you, to the extent that you'll be successful, everybody will be happy for you. But the point of the matter is, yes, the, we we see the the work that has gone on in housing, the Pitted Savannah con constituency um, community that was destroyed by the floodwaters of Erica in 2015 and had to be re relocated has been relocated, and there are a number of other housing developments that have taken place around the country. The point of the matter is, it is not an excuse 
to take over the revenue stream of the citizenship by investment program 90 percent of it on the on the excuse that this individual is building houses and so nobody must ask any questions about the monies that are raised under the program generally because like i said we have received only 3.4 billion dollars from the 11.6 billion we should have received in dominica from the sale of 50,709 citizenships in the last eight years and what that means is for a program where the legal price is 100,000 us dollars per citizen we only received per citizen in the last eight years twenty four thousand eight hundred and thirty three dollars with all the development work that you're seeing there which is on your screen in different parts of the country we have not been able to account for billions of dollars that have been collected from the sale of dominican passports and the prime minister keeps telling us that when you make those observations then you are an enemy of the state you are an economic terrorist you're a suicide bomber you're trying to prevent people from getting the benefits of the program and it's almost as though you literally want to kill them i mean we have to stop this because the monies from the sale of dominican citizenship belongs to the people of dominica and it must be properly spent the action we're taking as senior counsel was explaining is intended to protect the integrity of the program and to ensure that the revenues from the program are available to finance to 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 fund the various economic and social development benefits that will accrue to the well-being and progress of the people of dominica and that's all we want the, this idea that the, the loaf of bread that belongs to me i must not ask any questions about it because the person who is holding my loaf of bread is giving me crumbs is totally and absolutely unacceptable and for the government to be saying well, we're building houses and we're spending the money so don't ask us about the money that is perceived to be missing or is perceived to be misappropriated or is perceived to have been privatized outside of the government control it's totally and absolutely unacceptable and so i i have here from the organized crime and corruption report act which was published october 12 2023 and it says one of the world's biggest con citizenship by investment programs, the scheme made by uh, the island, $1.2 billion between 2017 and 2020 alone, according to Dominica's government, a boom since its inception in the early 1990s. It now makes up a significant portion of state revenues. But when reporters compared the names of new Dominicans published in the country's weekly national gazettes, with names uncovered in separate leaks, as well as with published budget figures, they found serious discrepancies that have not been explained by the government. The island's reporting system may offer an incomplete picture of just who acquired Dominican nationality. At worst, the findings call into question the transparency of the program's finances and whether islanders are benefiting to the degree they should. The National Gazettes, which spanned the years 2007 to 2022, include the names of roughly 7,700 new citizens. But a line item for naturalization in Dominica's national budgets that covers the period from mid-2016 to mid-2022 suggests that the government collected enough naturalization fees to account for more than 19,000 new citizens in those years alone for the fiscal years ending 2017 and 2018 for example dominica's naturalization fee which was 750 dollars before being lowered to 250 dollars in october of 2017 raised almost three million dollars for the island by conservative estimates this adds up to about 4,000 naturalizations in those two years in gazettes that correspond with these two budget years, however, the names of only 1,664 people were included, despite the fact that the gazette is meant to serve the country's official record of passport buyers. And for unexplained reasons, Dominica's gazettes stopped publishing the names of new citizens in March of 2019. 
Between then and December 2022, the last Gazette seen by reporters, the Gazette didn't include the name of a single new passport holder. It's unclear if any new lists have been published since. And once again, that's taken from Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project, an independent investigative reporting arm, and it was published on October 12, 2023. Anyone who wants to go and take a look for themselves. What do you I, concur I did, with I this? You, I, did, I did tell you earlier that in March of 2019, it's the same, it's the same gazette that the organized crime group is talking about that they have not seen another gazette since with any names of persons who have been approved for citizenship in Dominica. That is because we use that gazette to show the discrepancy in between the amount of persons who got citizenship, which we were able to confirm with the naturalization revenue numbers and the amount of revenue that the government was reporting that came in for the for the financial year it was as much as more than one billion dollars less than what it was supposed to have been and since that publication the government has decided it is not no further that there has been no further publication of names of successful applicants under the program in the gazette since march of 2019 that's more than five years ago so when we have asked for transparency, when we have asked for accountability, those are the things we talk about. The government is not transparent. The government is not accountable. The government is doing its own thing. And we have seen from what the prime minister, from the public utterance of the prime minister, that this housing option, basically, he has allowed this housing option to kill off the economic diversification fund of the government and people of Dominica, where all the citizenship money was going into, with the exception of the persons who were investing in real estate, which is another option, uh, and, and hotel development, which is another option under which you can get citizenship. In that, in that option, I should explain that as well. Uh, persons can invest their money in an approved project. $200,000 was the amount back then for, for the eight-year period we're talking about. And uh, in that, under that arrangement, the investor would pay a fee of $50,000 into the government treasury and get a passport, get citizenship of, of, of Dominica. So we are in a very difficult place right now as the government tries to scapegoat on the opposition and people who have expressed concern about the way in which the scheme is run by saying criticism the startup will say oh we don't mind criticism people can ask questions well we, we guess you can ask questions in dominica about citizenship by investment except you are you are the united workers party or you are associated with the opposition united workers party in some way shape or form then you're not allowed to or entitled to ask questions because you'll be referred to it all sorts of with all sorts of derogatory names like suicide bomber and economic terrorists and so on when, when what you're speaking is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, the, the government, lead, the head of government, has agreed that there are difficulties in bringing in the money that is being used to finance these infrastructure projects under the Hayden Citizenship Program. And he talks in the same, in the same vein about de-risking and uh, correspondent banking and they have their rules etc you heard that because yeah um, yeah we, 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 we'll, we'll get to that shortly actually we get in there i want to uh, ask you though um you know the the prime minister has indicated that you know and and there is no doubt that dominica has benefited tremendously um from the funds of the cbi and so with you now um, deciding to, to, to embark on this, when I say you, you the, the opposition party, embark on this. Some people will say, you know, things are working well. Everybody seems to be happy. People are getting houses. People are being employed um, through projects funded by the CBI. So what's all this big fuss? But before you comment, I want to go back to um, senior Crown Counsel because he, he has a response for that. Senior Crown Counsel Ram Logan uh, three, let's, let's get into him and then we'll come to you for your response. This is a request 
to light a candle in a dark room. Because the absence of information, if you ask the average citizen of Dominica, how much money has it generated? How, much, how has the money been spent? What are the terms and conditions of the contract that allows these agents to sell citizenship by investment? The answer is precious little is there to be found. We have searched the internet, we have searched the Hansard, and we have put together on a piecemeal basis the information that has been disclosed. But at the end of the day, um, it, is like, it is a bit like saying we should be happy that one eye man is king in blind man kingdom because you have built some houses and some roads but not telling us how much money the program generated, how much the roads cost, how the contractor was hired. So at the end of the day, a benefit, if we look at it this way, a, a benefit to the people that is procured, if, if it is in fact procured as a result of political corruption, waste or mismanagement, you can't focus on the benefit without reference to the process by which that benefit came because the benefit could have been multiplied and amplified to benefit not just a handful right. of careful, carefully selected people who might be political friends and supporters, but the benefit might have been benefited a lot more Dominicans because instead of 500 houses, you might have been able to get 5,000 houses for the same price. So that to view the benefit in a vacuum without reference to the need for public accountability would be an error in my respect for and so senior crown counsel there out of the price briefing last week addressing that and but he said that and before you you come in i want to uh, go to prime minister roosevelt Scar because he has said you know the schools the houses um there's a marina being built right now roads the hospital health centers the international airport that is being built all of that is being done by the cbi and what the opposition party is seeking to do is to undermine that that program and he says what you're doing is outright even dangerous because you never know that this matter goes before the court and the court might decide to stay the program until it can come to a decision and that's going to be disastrous for everyone let's take a listen to the prime minister he had a press conference on monday the 30th of september we'll take a listen to him and we'll come on back Anytime the opposition party speaks on the CBI, it has been in a negative light. They had an opportunity to speak on CBS, Al Jazeera, um, uh, the Daily Mail, the France 24, France 24, and all of those moments they used this platform to besmirch the program. All in effort to undermine the program, all in effort hoping that the program could come to an end and that the people who benefit directly from the program would no longer benefit. You heard him there and also indicated during yeah. the press conference yeah. that you, you fail while you're doing this, but you're failing to tell the Dominican public what your plans are, that you're not focusing on what it is that you're going to offer the Dominica um, electorate. Yeah, no, but, but what this is about is operating the scheme in a transparent and accountable manner, bearing in mind the necessity of these funds for financing the economic and social development and transformation of the people of Dominica. We, we, you hear talk about Hurricane Maria, and you hear talk about COVID, and you hear talk about all the things that the CBI has done, fine. That's a given because you can see what it has done. But the impression is that we, we had the Hurricane Maria, and then after Hurricane Maria, we had to use all the money we had from CBI and, uh, well, that set back the country because we could have done so many things. We could have paid off our debt. We could have done all these things. Since Maria, in September of 2017, September of 2017, Dominica has sold 47,300 citizenships. The value of that is 10.8 billion dollars but we have only received 2.9 billion into the treasury since maria which means that there's an amount of 7.9 billion since maria outside there unaccounted for in the meantime we have taken significant 
assistance from the international community, multilateral aid institutions, friendly governments, and so on, um, that have given us significant funds, hundreds of millions of dollars to help us with the recovery and the rebuilding of the of, of Dominica. There's some CBI money in there as well. But from what is before us, we have enough CBI money. We have raised enough money from the CBI program in the last eight years to be able to pay off our national debt, which is in the region of $1.6 billion, to pay for the international airport, which they have now moved from 1 billion to 1.3 billion to 1.6 billion to pay for that in cash, to revitalize all of the economic growth engines of the, of the country, whether we talk in agriculture, we talk in manufacturing, or we talk in tourism, we have enough money to do all that so that we could put young people to work in sustainable jobs, sustainable, good paying jobs, and not have a situation where, notwithstanding all the monies that we have raised from citizenship by investments, our young people are still going to Antigua and still going to St. Lucia and still going to St. Kitts looking for work. We have more passport money than all of them, maybe with the exception of, of St. Kitts. We have done all these wonderful things, but our young people are still unemployed in their country. Our carpenters, our masons, our artisans are unable to find work in a period of time where we have the greatest build out of economic infrastructure. We have an international airport. We've spent in the last three or four years, $546 million on the international airport. But we have citizens of Dominica whose properties were acquired for the public purpose of the airport who still cannot get paid for their land, for their properties, compulsorily acquired for the international airport after the government has spent $546 million as of the 30th of June, 2014. So there are issues. If you, if you just, without context, without paying attention to what is happening and the real interest of the people, you throw up pictures of a, of a set of housing development, of health centers, of things going on, you say, well, wow, that looks wonderful. These are pictures. The reality on the ground is that, yes, these things are there, but the economy of Dominica remains the smallest, slowest growing economy in the region, Le the one least capable of employing its own citizens. I know what does that tell you? So we have reason, we have reason to interrogate this relationship between Anthony Hayden and Roosevelt Skerritt that has cost the state billions of dollars that should be applied to the development of Dominica. We have a lot of things to do. What the, the prime the, minister the, the says, he's not, he's, he's not averse. You know, he says he has no problems with questions being asked at all, that interrogation that you speak except, of. Except and these, he did appear, he, I, I, <laughs> he did appear with uh, here in, uh, on the program here in St. Lucia, uh, with uh, the Castri Central MP and our minister for housing, Richard Frederick. And um, he did make that statement quite emphatically, and he has repeated it, um, uh, that he's not opposed to any form of scrutiny at all. So let's take a listen to Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt. Prior to becoming Prime Minister, um, there were no reports to Parliament, it, and it was... And so we are preparing ourselves to win ourselves out of, this, out of the CBI. Um, if that were to happen, God forbid, at some point in time, you understand? Uh, and this is what we want about managing the affairs of this, of this CBI program. And I said to you, prior to me becoming Prime Minister, um, there were no reports to Parliament, it, and it was never in the estimates of revenues. It was never um, um, recognized as a special um, source of funds um, for capital projects and programs. If you go to our budget estimate, you will see where it is, it is written, Students by Investment Program. It tells you how much we project to raise in the current financial year, and in the reporting previous year, tells you how much you actually raise. And if you go into the capital estimate, you will see where it will, it will say, source of funding, CBI. CBI. You understand? And, and this is what it is. And, and we, we are not opposed to any legitimate scrutiny, any legitimate questions and concerns that any citizen or resident may have. And so do you hear him there. Uh, so no problems so, no difficulties so I'm, whatsoever so I'm, not, I'm not i'm not i'm not a citizen i'm not a resident 
he, he doesn't he doesn't answer the questions that I pose, whether it was in Parliament or outside of Parliament. As a matter of fact, September of 2019, he said that he's not an accounting officer, so it is going to be up to the accounting officers in the Ministry of Finance to do these numbers and to report. And when they have done that, they're going to put me to shame because the people of Dominica will see once and for all how unsuitable I am to be finance minister or to be the prime minister of Dominica. That was five years ago, in September of 2019. These numbers have not surfaced up till now. We keep talking but he says, about... But, but, but he says, he says what, 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 they, what he's doing and the path is working diligently to be able to put Dominica on... on uh, to, put, to, to put Dominica almost as the envy of the Caribbean, if you will, because on that program he did sure. say that the goal... <laughs> was to make Dominica debt-free. Let's take a listen to that explanation. And he said he hadn't told the nation yet, but that was the goal, or it remains the goal. So let's take a listen to that. <laughs> Had it not been for Hurricane Maria, we would have raised enough money to pay off every single in the world we are owing as a country. And we would have been the first developing country in the world to have a zero to debt, a zero percent to um, debt to GDP ratio. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And then what? What? We, and what? And my plan was the monies that we were paying um, um, to, for loans and interest payments, we would create a special fund, and we would continue to pay into that fund as if we were still paying loans. Yes. And then use that money now to help um, grow the economy, address issue of poverty. Um, and, 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 and social dislocation, which will always exist in our societies. And so this is what we are doing with the CBI program. And that certainly says that the Prime yeah, Minister Lisa, indeed has a plan. Lisa, he has a plan, and he has been talking about this plan. But what has happened with it, with the plan? The debt stock of the Commonwealth of Dominica continues to grow. We have just taken a loan of $111 million from the Saudis to do a refurbishment of the capital city of Roseau. We have, we, have, we have been taking substantial amount of debts in the last three or four years, notwithstanding the availability of significant monies from the Citizenship by Investment Program, which he said would have helped us to be debt-free. Lisa, again, since Maria... And he said Maria messed things up. If it wasn't for Maria, he would have paid off all the country's debt. But since Maria, the country has raised $10.8 billion from citizenship by investment. All that has come into the treasury from that is $2.9 billion, which leaves an amount of $7.9 billion unaccounted for since Maria. And the prime minister comes on a program in St. Lucia to tell you that we have all these plans to, to pay down the debt and to do all these wonderful things. Where is the money, Mr. Prime Minister? The $7.9 billion that has not been accounted for. And why, when we ask questions about this, which numbers are based on the naturalization revenue numbers that you give to the parliament and you boast about every year? We, we, we make some common sense assessments based on those numbers. Nobody challenges the fact that we have sold 47,300 citizenships since Maria. And nobody challenges either that we should have raised $10.8 billion from that. The question is, what has happened to the $7.9 billion that we know nothing about or is under private control somewhere else? Because all we have received from the 10.8 billion is 2.9 billion dollars. So, so it's good to talk. By the way, Lisa, I have a question for you. I hope you don't mind. Are you aware uh, the, the Prime Minister of Saint Lucia is he is he a regular on this on this? Can I help you talk show? No, he's not a regular. He, I he doesn't has he no. Ever, has, has he appeared? Uh, are you, are you aware my, when he has appeared on that? I, show? I can't to be knowledge. too certain if he has appeared. I don't think so. I don't hold me to okay. that, but I don't recall. <laughs> but the Prime why, Minister why, of Dominica 
no, well, no. I just, I just found, I just found it strange that there's certain very popular media platforms in Dominica, talk shows and so on, that the prime minister will not appear on. The prime minister will not have a debate. The prime minister will not debate anybody in the opposition. But not you, the leader, you, not anybody else in the opposition. But but you, the prime you, minister. But you would is know. On, you you would know uh, that uh, you know sometimes. Uh, uh, people in particular positions would want to go, as you say in the business, um, some friendly spaces, spaces where they can definitely feel comfortable, uh, or they're going to get a fair uh, okay, shot. Okay. And so, as, so he a, felt, as a so former he felt media man, you know that as well. Uh, he, he, he felt comfortable there. I More comfortable there than he, than he would feel with a normal talk show in Dominica on one of the popular radio stations. All right. I, I, I get it. I get, I get that. But you know, but, one but, of the things, one of the things that the um, that has gotten so much attention is the uh, correspondent banking, like the risking, and whether or not Dominica is uh, facing um, that sort of situation. Uh, when the prime minister was on the uh, Richard Frederick show, can I help you? He did say that there was no truth to this so let's take a listen to him then and we will work our way backwards i'm not aware of this uh, i don't think there's any truth to this there's no truth to this um i can tell you and also say to you mr frederick mm -hmm. I, i've been prime minister for 20 years as you indicated and for all of those 20 years and prime minister um dr ken anthony could tell you so um unfortunately um honorable um Compton is deceased, uh, but um, Honorable King could tell you, Honorable Shastney could tell you, Honorable um, Pierre could tell you. I have been able to all of his prime ministers. And all of those times, we've had to battle um, with the developed countries in respect to correspondent bank banking and the whole de-risking that they have been engaging in. This has been a mantra of the Caribbean for many years. Um, and and, and for anyone to to link um, correspondent banking to CBI exclusively is really not being honest with the people of, with people of the Caribbean. And so the issue of threats to withdraw correspondent banking, um, there's no evidence of this. Um, um, I have not been told so. I have, I have been in touch for banks here. Um, no one has said to me that is the case. Um, they continue to maintain very productive and responsible and ethical res um, relationships with the correspondent banks, and um, they will continue to do so. So that's the prime right. minister there when he appeared mm -hmm. there. However, that was, that uh, was we, September. That, that, September. Yes, that was in September. But in July mm -hmm. and um, right. in Ju July 15, he was asked this directly. So let's hear what he said in July. It appears that Dominic is having, uh, from what I gather from sources. Um, having difficulty moving money from the citizen by investment program through international banks to source programs like the airport and housing and other CBI funded projects. How does government plan to resolve that situation? The citizenship and residency programs, the world over, um, are having challenges where banking is concerned. So it is not, it, and if you speak to any of the c countries in the Caribbean, they'll tell you so. If you speak to Malta, if you speak to any one of them, they'll tell you so. Um, they, they, you have challenges in, 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 in this. The, the bank has rules and everybody has to respect the rules. Um, I do not believe that the bank is being unduly um, um, unreasonable you understand um, they have to deal with correspondent banks um, and we have been working with the banks on this um, the banks has indicated the, the 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 process to follow and the documentation that they need and so on which are very transparent in my view I saw them I read them this morning again uh, with the very transparent rules um, so there are times you will you will have challenges of of some funds coming in and uh so that was the prime minister back in july but on on monday on uh, september 30 he sought to clarify because he was asked once again what exactly is the situation and so he gave this as a clarification if you have monies coming in 
from to the bank. The bank requires certain questions to be asked and certain information to be provided. There's nothing unusual about that. And that's what I was saying. That's the point I was saying. The government itself, when the government gets money from whoever it gets money from, they have to stop, they have to um, file. They have to file. You understand? So it's, you, have, you, have to, you have to submit documents, such a fund document. So it's not an unusual practice. That's the point I was making at the time. But it was interpreted in a particular way. So there you have uh, it, the right. three explanations. But, 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 but Lisa, please, let's, let's go back. What the, the specific question posed to the Prime Minister had to do with difficulties being experienced by Anthony Hayden and MMC bringing money into Dominica for the financing of those projects that they are responsible for under the Citizenship by Investment Program. It was very, the question was very specific to Anthony Hayden because it mentioned the airport, it mentioned housing, it mentioned other infrastructure. Hayden is the one doing the housing, Hayden is the one doing the, infra, the, the airport, Hayden is the one doing the other infrastructure. And the Prime Minister gave his answer. Now, what, why would you have to bring up the risking and why would you have to bring up uh, correspondent banking in the course of answering a question like that only because you are aware that there's some difficulties with Anthony Hayden and MMC meeting the compliance requirements for money transfers in the international banking system that's all it is so to try to run away now to say well that's not what I meant or somebody meant something different you, you must say what you mean and not expect people to mean what you say. That's one point. Dominica, last uh, 10 years or so, we have had our issues with CBI money and the international banks. We had Royal Bank of Canada operating down here in Dominica. And a, a time came in February of, of 2017, which interestingly is after the entry of Anthony Hayden private option citizenship into the market and uh, be the beginning of the cannibalization of the government's program. Royal Bank said to the government, listen, you have some money here in our account, in an account of, on the citizenship by investment. We want you, we are giving you your money, go and bring it somewhere else, okay? So the government took that money. When we asked the question in parliament, the prime minister says, well, the Royal Bank did not give any reasons for not maintaining the account. So the Royal Bank shut down the government's CBI account give it back its money, the government took the money to the National Bank of Dominica. After the Royal Bank, we had the First Caribbean International Bank, we had Scotia Bank operating in Dominica as well. Both of those banks also followed the Royal Bank lead and closed the CBI accounts, not just of the government, but of citizenship by investment agents in Dominica. So all of that money, all of that CBI money has gone into the National Bank, our National Bank of Dominica. Now, in recent years, that same national bank has lost correspondent banking relationships or correspondent banking relationships have been terminated for whatever reason with Societe General, with Crown Agents, with Lloyds Bank, with TD Bank, and with City Bank. So, to, 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 to give an impression that <laughs> there's nothing wrong when the monies that are supposed to be coming in from your CBI program through your main developer of CBI projects and your main CBI agent, the one responsible for the program that has cannibalized your government program to the extent of now controlling over 90% of the revenues of the CBI and to suggest that you have no problem, even though you place the reasons for the problem on the table back in July, it's just disingenuous. No wonder the the people of Dominica and, and St. Lucians probably will, will understand this. The people of Dominica have dubbed the, the conference on Wednesday, on Monday, the Anomati. You know what that means, Lisa? They dubbed the, the, the Anomati. Oh, Anomati. Okay. Well, you know Anomati, the Creole yes. in Dominica and St. Lucia. We differ a little bit. All right. Let me say Mati. All right. Anomati. Mati. Okay. Mati. I, Anomati. I, 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 in, in, in interesting there. That's an interesting label. But, yeah. you know, but, you know, I've heard the Prime Minister Roosevelt Scarrett say that you really have to protect 
the CBI because, uh, once again, because of its importance to the economy there. Uh, and he suggested that you and the UWP over in Dominica, you you colluding with foreign actors um, and to uh, to damage the CBI so that you can bring down his government. I want to ask you very directly. Are you in collusion with Philippe Martinez of MSR Media? Because your action comes on the, you know, following what Philippe Martinez, his action over in St. Kitts and involving St. Lucia in it. I have spoken to Philippe Martinez because Philippe Martinez is involved in the citizenship by investment program of a neighboring Caribbean country, two neighboring Caribbean countries, and with whom Dominica's CBI program now has a memorandum of understanding that they're going to operate together. All right. The reason I have, I, when I when I heard about this uh, lawsuit and legal action by Felipe Martinez, I found a way to get in touch with him, and I've spoken to him on a number of occasions about what he's doing, and I've also spoken to him about whether whether our situation in Dominica could be part of what he's doing internationally, because I realized. This is a gentleman who has access to more significantly more resources than we do in Dominica in opposition to, to fight these major battles that involved at the end of the day returning significant sums of money belonging to the people of Dominica to the people of Dominica where they rightfully belong. And and, and so we have had discussions, but I'm not in, in to, to use the term that I'm in collusion with Philip Felipe Martinez, which suggests that I'm involved in setting his agenda or deciding what he does. No nothing of the sort it's it's all about uh finding out what, what is going saying? on what is he been doing was that you 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 want you've asked philip martinez to help you is that what you're saying i just want to be clear i i have i have sought given his work given the work that he's doing in st kitts and in st lucia i have approached philip martinez i sought him out i i found i got his number and i called him on the phone and i asked him well, well what do you, you know, want of him directly how, how is what how is what you're doing in St. Kitts and St. Lucia, how, how could that be beneficial to us in Dominica? We've had those discussions. Right? And, and we're having and those discussions because, because it has gotten to the stage where uh, in recent weeks there's been talk about him leading a class action lawsuit, correct. which will give the people of the different islands an, an opportunity to recover some, maybe all, hopefully all of the money that has been taken from them through the international banking system that somehow complied that that may have may have a responsibility in the the inadequate sums that have come to us in these islands oh well the class action also um, much is not known about it but i'm just wondering how far it extends um because uh a Caribbean Galaxy, because I think the action is about against Caribbean Galaxy. It does operate here. It does operate in St. Kitts. But, you know, I, as we say, we don't know much about exactly what it's going to be about. So perhaps we have, we have no can benefit we have no, from that. We have no Caribbean Galaxy in Dominica. Our Caribbean Galaxy is Montreal Management, MMCs, the MMC outfit of Anthony. That's our Caribbean Galaxy. So is, is this an issue or are you using, because you say you're looking to Martinez to give you some assistance, perhaps to give you, um, helping you, as you say, resource-wise and so forth. Uh, and the Prime Minister did indicate at his press conference on Monday, uh, he did ask, well, how is the opposition paying no, for the Crown Lisa, Council? Lisa, let's be, let's, let's be, let's be clear. I, I, want, I, don't want to get, I don't want to get mixed up in the use of terms. We here. want to be clear. We, we have had we have had absolutely no conversation with Felipe Martinez about money for okay. this case or for anything else or for anything else. Right? We have decided to go to court with this matter, and and our decision to go to court predates uh, the arrival of Mr. Martinez and his his work there. It's just yes, that I think it did indicate something like take, five years in the take, making. Things take time. Things take time to happen. Yeah, and um, we have had a number of opinions. Uh, legal opinions second legal opinions and so on before you know it was decided and then we had to we had to decide who was the best person to take this forward for us etc uh, what's going to be the cost of it how we're going to raise the money and so on and so far we are raising the money from the people of dominica the monies we have collected so far for this from this court case have absolutely no contribution from any foreign 
person or entity. All of the money has come from Dominicans, the majority of them Dominicans living in Dominica, and some from Dominicans who are living overseas. Not one cent from any foreign entity. And I want to make that clear because the Prime Minister is suggesting he's the only person who knows anything about raising funds. The Prime Minister has members of the opposition in the court persecuting them, using high-priced lawyers from Trinidad, spending millions of dollars for a public meeting that took place in February of 2017 when people assembled in large numbers to say that Skerritt must go. And hours after the meeting closed in the capital city of Roseau, there was some vandalism in the city which the United Workers Party got blamed for and a number of our executives have been brought before the court for incitement, for obstruction, for all sorts of things. And we're still there. Uh, our, our system talks about uh, a fair trial in front of an independent tribunal within a reasonable period of time. Well, we've been, we've been waiting for seven years for a day in court and uh, we're still waiting. If you, can right. if you can understand that in the context of St. Lucia. And uh, speaking about the context of St. Lucia, before you know our time is running out, I want to get back to something that you said earlier, and that has to do with uh, your National Economic Pro uh, uh, Fund. Um, here we call it our National Economic Fund. Um, mm -hmm. And you were talking about that the housing project seems to be running the sort of competition with that. And we seem to be seeing some of that here in St. Lucia as well with uh, the uh, real estate uh, and uh, infrastructure options with Caribbean Galaxy. Now, I want us, I want you to take a listen to the CEO of St. Lucia Citizenship by Investment Program, Mr. McClaude Emanuel, and he did an interview um, with Eric Majors of Global Passport Investor Podcast. And uh, that aired of January 4, I believe, of 2024. So let's take a listen to him and then we'll have a little convo after. We have clients who investigate uh, these measures and these opportunities. They look at what you describe as the four options. And there's, you know, risk return that comes into mind. There's capital outlay and, and um, whether one gets their investment back. And there's all these considerations versus, let's say, a donation. And your National Economic Fund is obviously the recipient of that donation. And uh, the amount you pay depends on the size of the family. But there's also been some, some would say, innovation by certain uh, participants in your real estate option where a developer says, oh, you're looking for real estate, I'm going to offer you an investment in real estate because that's permissible, right? Yes. Um, and, and the investment thresholds there are typically uh, more elevated, in fact, 200,000, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is that, you know, could with some product innovation, as we have seen in this particular developer's case, uh, where financing is being brought to bear and presented to the client, where the all-in cost could challenge the National uh, Economic Fund or the donation route. Uh, you know, the market knows this, the government ought and clearly should know this, you mm -hmm. as the CEO I'm sure know this as well. Mm -hmm. Is that a problem? Is that uh, okay? W what's your view on this? I mean, for, from, our, from our vantage point, we ensure that we sell at the mandated prices. So legislatively, donation 100, raising 200, bonds 300, etc. And there are various tiers for the, the enterprise. We also do know that um, there are commercial agreements that are done with developers and promoters to sell at particular price points. And for us, what, what we do, we ensure that um, as, per, as per the development of the necessary accounts, the extra accounts, we ensure we see the requisite growth that corresponds to each applicant. Mm -hmm. and, and so far, we've been seeing it at the price that we legislated and um, so so that that provides us with comfort and, and ease of mind but when you have read it um, and you've seen some prices banded around some of them I, I think are deliberately done to malign the country because I think as anything else this is a business environment and you know it can be a little cut foot yes at times and people <laughs> sometimes especially if you're if you're growing product um, persons may seek to differentiate themselves by trying to slander your brand. Mm. Um, but St. Lucia will not engage in that because we believe that our proposition is strong enough mm. to weather any particular storm of 
criticism, but definitely we've, we've heard about it and what we've also been doing, any promoter who is seen promoting the loaded legislative prices have been blacklisted. Okay. So you go to our website www.cipcnusha.com, S-A-I-N-T-L-U-C-I-E.com, and there's a blacklist tab. And we have blacklisted promoters who we've seen our flyers selling Sinusha product at less than the legislated prices. Mm -hmm. So we have done that. And in other cases, we have provided cautions to persons. Mm -hmm. And we have first warnings, failure to obey, would cause them to also be blacklisted. And, they, and they, the licensing would, would not be renewed. So, so we are taking measures internally to mitigate. So yes. if, I, if I'm hearing you, and that's that's fair, everything you've just said makes a lot of sense, but what you're saying uh, in clear terms is there needs to be 200000 in escrow in a developer's account, uh, and the CIA needs to be satisfied by that yeah. before uh, COR or certificates yes. and, and, and yes. passports can be yes. issued. Yes. And then after that, 200000 makes its way to the construction and the development of Yes. to escrow agreements. Yes. So you're saying you guys are satisfied that no matter what's being said out there yes. and whatever was being signed out there, yeah. because these are commercial matters, as yes. you say, yes. the CIU, so I would say, should be in, be accountable accountable to seeing that 200000 yes. for each applicant. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Indeed. So as long as that's happening, Indeed. I'll tell you as a banker for 22 years, uh, I don't have a problem with that because I made my career selling Canadian Immigrant Investor Program with financing. Right. Uh, okay. uh, right, and that's that's what we did uh, yeah, in, in the banks that I work for, and it was a big component of our of our business. And so, there's nothing wrong with financing, so long as the government gets what it's supposed to get. Indeed, right? Indeed. Certainly. Certainly. Okay. So we're we're um, we're clear on that. And uh, so, if conversation there taken uh, from um, the podcast with Eric Majors. Um, he is the CEO of Latitude Group. It's one of the leading um, in investment uh, migration uh, firms, consultancy firms mm -hmm. out there. But he made a point that, you know, they're talking about that there are some innovations happening in the marketplace. And you spoke earlier about the sort of underpricing and that sort of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, um, Eric Majors is saying, once the government gets what it needs to get, your thoughts? Well, in, in, no, no. In, in our case, in Dominica, I'm not sure uh, what what he means by once the government gets what it needs to get, because the government has been getting monies uh, on the order of twenty four thousand eight hundred dollars per citizen, U.S. dollars per citizen, from from a program that offers citizenship at the legal price of a hundred thousand U.S. dollars. Now, it's interesting recently. When a question was posed to the Prime Minister about his main agent selling below the legal price, he wasn't concerned about the main agent selling below the legal price. He was concerned about people who were buying below the legal price. And he said that people should know what the legal price is. And if they are found um, buying below the legal price, then their citizenship is going to be revoked. He, he, he gave no sanction at all. No idea that those who sell the agent who is or the agents who are selling below the legal price will be will have the license revoked or anything of the sort in other words the agent can do what the agent wants it can sell you at 90,000 as opposed to 100,000 and if that happens if you if for some reason you decide to buy then your passport your citizenship is going to be revoked the agent can continue selling at whatever he wants well, I didn't. And, in St. Lucia's and, and, case, and if, at least, we, you know, we have that blacklist uh, uh, aspect right. that you can get blacklisted if you do not do that. Although we are. Your license as an hearing, agent, your license as an agent, your license as an agent in St. Lucia can be revoked if you sell below the legal price. There's no such thing in Dominica. The only person that Dominica, Prime Minister, wants to penalize are those who bought below the legal price, those who sold below the legal price appear to have been authorized by him to do that now as we run out of time i want to make it make sense yeah <laughs> make it make sense we we yeah. we let's see how that blast from the past because that's something we used to say you know a few years back so blast from the past for you uh mm -hmm. an interview that you conducted during your media days and it mm -hmm. was with roosevelt scarrett 
You sat with uh -huh. him on Good uh -huh. Morning Dominica. Yeah. That's February 7, 2000. 2000. And he had just won. Yeah. He had just won. Listen, listen to how... So, Listen to how he refers to me, Mr. Linton. Mr. Linton, Mr. Linton sir, sir, sir. Mr. Linton, sir. sir. sir, sir. <laughs> and so I want to play a little excerpt of that. Um, both of you were very young. I know he was, he's much younger than I am. <laughs> so let, let's, <laughs> let, let's go to that clip where uh, Mr. Lennox Linton speaking there with Roosevelt Skerritt on Good Morning Dominica. Was there some difference of opinion within the party as to whether you were in fact ready for ministerial responsibility? Not, not, not quite. The Prime Minister always felt that myself and Vince have the capabilities and, and the maturity to, to run a ministry. Mm -hmm. But you know, with the, with the coalition government, you know, the, the, the Prime Minister rightly said, they were, you have to make some compromises and some changes here and there. Mm -hmm. um, so so that, was, that was the situation, but there was no real opposition within the lower party that Vince and myself couldn't run a ministry. That was not opposition, difference of opinion. The difference of opinion, uh, no. no um, because no. the way, the way it um, turned out, one day on the first announcement <coughs> of the cabinet, you were in a junior role. Junior. Second day, you were in a ministerial responsibility in your own right. Well, I think, I think what happened, um, there was a serious uproar in the country. Mm -hmm. um, because people across the country felt, well, um, scared, who do you think has the energy and the, and the excitement? And they've heard my, my ideas, felt, well, they believe he should be somewhere who in some position rather than a junior minister position. And one of my greatest concern is um, the, the fact that there's no money for, for the sports stadium. Mm -hmm. So now yeah, they have placed another headache on me to, to, to raise funds with the prime minister to bring in the sports stadium to Dominica. You're committed to doing that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I think we need to revisit the plan, though, because the existing um, plan for the stadium does not um, solve any existing problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't have cricket and football being played in Dominica at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think we should go ahead and, and, and change that plan and do something like Guinea, where you have a separate cricket ground and, and, and a football and track and field. So, I, so at the end of the day, we can West Indies and England could be in Dominica, where and Africa and Dominica could be in football at the same time. Mm -hmm. As you fought the campaign and uh, the issue of resources came to your mind, um, did you begin to think that we must start doing something differently about campaign financing in Dominica? So certainly, I think. Um, let us try to, to level the playing field mm -hmm. um, so that we all can have, a, have a, a fair chance to, to make a, a contribution to the country. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that maybe we can have some changes and, and do it like, like America where, where, you know, maybe, I don't know whether the, 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 for, for America, the government gives you a certain amount of money to run yeah. a campaign. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you're representing the country. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, and I think there should be some kind of reform as to uh, how we raise money for the campaign and how monies are allocated. Mm -hmm. so that will help tremendously, I think, mm -hmm. in leveling the playing field. Uh, thank you very much, Ruben. Let's carry it. Next that time you come here, let's call out the sir, okay? Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben, let's carry it. And, and good morning, Stella. You've done a fine job, uh, and all the people of Vegas there, uh, but Stella specifically, and lips and wherever you are good morning and have a great day uh, let's thank roosevelt for coming and sharing with us this morning he is the new mp for the vacas constituency and later today he's going to be sworn in as the minister for youth affairs and sports not bad for a 27 year old as we move on and time goes by in this beautiful dominica break here for with more sponsors back in just a moment not bad for wow. 24 year old so wow. blast <laughs> from the past there uh, it's now 24 years uh, later. Your impression of Roosevelt Scarlet? Uh, well, it's it's interesting because uh, 24 years ago, Roosevelt Scarlet was uh, satisfied in his mind that we needed campaign finance regulations. And uh, today, having uh, been in government uh, for 24 years and having been the head of government for 20 years, Roosevelt Scarlet, having been asked by the people repeatedly for reforms to the electoral process, electoral system that includes the campaign finance regulation, is now has now set his face resolutely against campaign finance regulations, claiming that it is something for the region to ha to handle together, as opposed to him alone in Dominica. And and what we have asked for, very simple, we want uh, declarations of of uh, campaign funding. And we want limits placed on the amount of money that people can spend. And we want limits placed on where people can receive money from, etc. Things like that, that would take the election campaign away from the 
big money, the influence of, of big money. Now he says campaign finance regulation means that the treasury will have to provide money for the opposition parties and other political parties. And he has his supporters around the country beating down the initiative to say uh, it's because opposition parties want money from the treasury to campaign while they're calling for campaign finance reform. And, and it's important that people around the region understand that because, you know, we still don't have ID cards for voting in Dominica. And we still don't have a system uh, in the law and uh, that 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 we can rely on for cleansing of the voters list to ensure that the people who are on the list uh, are the people who are alive qualified and who are ordinarily resident in the commonwealth of dominica and we we <laughs> to, to hear to listen back to that years ago and now after he spent seven hundred thousand dollars of the people's money on a consultancy for electoral reform which was conducted in dominica by sir dennis byron a former head of the ccj uh, he got recommendations one of the recommendations clearly addresses the necessity for campaign finance regulations and they have tossed it aside in the amended legislation that they intend to take to parliament to give effect to the reform so interesting and interesting well, I want to thank you so much. Our time okay. is fast come. I want to thank you so much, Lennox Linton, for giving us some insight into what's happening in Dominica with respect to the Citizenship by Investment program. I want to thank you very much, my audience, for tuning in. See you next time. I'm Lisa Joseph. <laughs>